What's going on guys? Yeah. It's the Skylander Dude. And one of the most common topics I hear people discuss in this community is a seventh Skylanders game. People often ask if I see the possibility of a Skylander 7, what I would want to see from a Sky 7, and other things like that. Now that would be its own separate video. Today, I'd much rather discuss if we as a community should actually want a new Skylanders game. If you're a fan, then you're probably quick to jump on this and say, uh, duh. <laughs> We've been without a new console game for years. Of course we'd want a new one. But there's a lot more to consider in this conversation. The way I look at it is that there's generally three sides people take when discussing a new Skylanders console release. There's the people rooting for a Skylander 7, some would prefer a remaster of the older games, or some wouldn't want anything and enjoy Skylanders in the state that it's in currently. Now everyone has the right to their own opinion, and there isn't a right or wrong answer here. I'm not trying to bash anyone if they prefer one option over the other, but rather I'm going to try to look at this logistically and see what would be the best choice for Microsoft to keep the Skylanders community happy. First, the infamous Skylanders 7. So what exactly would a 7th console installment of Skylanders look like? There's many paths the devs and designers can take when tackling a Sky 7. Before I look into some of those paths, I feel like there's a few things that pretty much have to be included for this to feel like a game within the Skylanders universe. The first would be the story. For the most part, each previous Skylander game follows the same pattern of progressing through the story by completing each level in order. This sort of action-adventure styled gameplay should be implemented here in Sky 7. Now I know the want for an open world mode is pretty popular amongst the fans, and that still could be implemented separately, but come on, this wouldn't be a Skylanders game without following that original story pattern. Additionally, the same cast of NPCs would likely make their return here as well. OGs like Flynn made their appearance in every installment, and you can't have a continued release without them. Every yearly release also had some sort of gimmick that tried to keep the magic of the franchise alive. I think without a new gimmick, Skylander 7 would turn into more of a spin-off game rather than a continuation of the other console games. What that gimmick is exactly is up in the air and frankly irrelevant to this conversation. While not necessary, I think there's a good chance we'd see one. So what about the things that could really go either way? Something that was always consistent with the new console releases was the backwards compatibility of older characters. I truthfully don't think it's realistic to say that that would be a guarantee for Sky 7. It really would come down to how they'd tackle Toys to Life, so let's talk about that too. Absolutely the biggest factor of a 7th game is if they would make another attempt at Toys to Life and release physical figures to use with the game. It's probably safe to say that Toys to Life was just kind of a fad in the moment and doesn't really thrive today. That being said, it would be a big decision to revitalize that time and try to bring back the physical toys. That's not to say it's impossible, but it would be financially safer if they opted for the complete digital route. Sure, there are some specifications on each side, like maybe they try releasing some sort of NFC coins rather than full-blown figures, or whether or not they'd lock every digital character behind a DLC paywall. So let me bring back backwards compatibility for a second, because I feel like whichever path they choose could increase or decrease the chances of using older figures. If they went down the path of releasing any physical products with NFC technology, whether it's figures, coins, cards, whatever, they'd need to bring back the portals, because how else would you scan them all in? I feel like if they go through all the trouble of reviving physical aspects, the chances of them implementing backwards compatibility are much higher. With that being said, if they kept everything digitally with no need for a physical portal, it's less likely they'd work out a system to either implement all the old characters digitally or allow us to hook up an old portal. Whichever they choose, backwards compatibility is still not a guarantee. New characters, however, would definitely make an appearance. This is often overlooked, but I want to bring up the potential design for new characters, levels, or other content. It's been years since Toys for Bob and Vicarious Visions designed the Skylanders games, and with that, lots of the amazing people behind the art of this franchise don't even work for the company anymore. Heck, I don't even think Vicarious Visions as their own studio exists anymore. On top of that, with Toys for Bob's recent announcement of the team going indie, they might not even be the people who work on a potential Skylanders game under Microsoft's management. I know they briefly mentioned a future partnership with Microsoft, but for the sake of this video, nothing is guaranteed. There's a chance that if Microsoft wants to explore Skylanders again, the chosen development team would have never worked with this franchise before. This would likely leave us with a different art style than the one that we knew from older console installments. While not necessarily a bad thing, I fear that us diehard fans wouldn't be able to connect to this new art style and the Skylander 7 everybody wants wouldn't live up to our expectations. At face value, a 7th Skylanders installment is too much of a gamble for Microsoft to just drop out of the blue. Would it build excitement? 
for sure. Could it strengthen the community further? Possibly, but I fear that would only be temporary as eventually the community would return to the state that it's currently in, or even worse if the game receives too much backlash. The risks that come with a Sky 7 wouldn't be worth the reward in my eyes, and I think it's important to consider other options that could be better for the franchise. So what does that look like? Well, let's break down the next popular choice from the community, a Skylanders remaster. If you're not familiar, when an older video game is remastered, it's generally updated with improved graphics and optimized for modern systems. Occasionally, additional bonus features might be included in a remaster, but not always. When people root for a Skylanders remaster, they usually sit on the sides of having just Spire's Adventure remastered or having both Spire's Adventure and Giants remastered combined in one release. In terms of this discussion, having just one or both games remastered doesn't really matter, but I see either or being possible. From Swap Force and beyond, the graphics in Skylanders were seriously upgraded and all the later four games can still be played on next generation consoles. It's also very possible that this remaster could feature two games bundled together, especially when looking at some of Toys for Bob's remasters, like Crash Insane Trilogy, which remastered three games. No matter how many they choose to remaster, we're again stuck with the decision of using the old Toys to Life figures or opting to include them all digitally loaded in. I'd argue this decision is tougher than choosing the path for a Skylander 7. If they opt to allow us to still hook up a portal and use our older figures, it would seriously limit any newcomers to the franchise that didn't pick up any toys back in the day. I feel like at that point, they would need to release some sort of physical option that new fans can purchase alongside the game to have access to the old characters. But again, that's financially risky. Whether they'd release some sort of legacy physical version of these characters, or multiple characters in one NFC toy, the market for that is just much more limited. Not everyone would need these newer figures if they had older ones to use. On the other hand, if they just included the original 32 digitally, that completely removes the magic of Toys to Life that Skylanders was built off of. It's really tough to pick between risking reliving that magic or staying on the safer side and hopefully still appealing to the fans. Fortunately for me, I'm not the one who has to make that decision. Just know when I discuss this remaster, like a Sky 7, there's many paths the developers can take. Speaking of, one of the worries about a Skylander 7 is that a new developer team would be trekking through some unknown territory. But with this remaster, it could help introduce a new team to the franchise. They'll be spending their time intentionally recreating the Skylanders art style. There wouldn't be any need for them to have to come up with their own assets. I feel like us fans would be a lot more trusting in a new team tasked to recreate the older games than if they had to jump right in and hopefully have a good idea of the style of the Skylanders world. This is why I'm suggesting that a Skylanders remaster should be supported over jumping straight into a Skylanders 7. With a new team spending all this time working with the old assets, it can almost be used as training for them to understand the style of the franchise. Even if Toys for Bob partnered with Microsoft to re-explore Skylands, the team they have now is totally different from who originally worked on the franchise in 2011. I think this adds value to a remaster releasing first. From there, if a remaster is well received, that same team would be better trusted to continue to explore the Skylanders franchise. We've literally just seen this with Crash Bandicoot. His remastered trilogy released, and then Toys for Bob made Crash 4. And everyone likes to talk about the Spyro rumors, so it's possible Spyro will follow a similar pattern with a Spyro 4 game in the future. I'm kind of getting ahead here, but I just wanted to give a sense of how a remastered Skylanders could pan out. Of course, a lot of us would love to play a new adventure in a 7th Skylanders game, but in the long run, it's important to consider the quality of that game and its development. But there's still one last outcome we should consider, and that's just no more new Skylanders content in general. It sounds pretty depressing, but let's actually think about what this means. As of filming this video, the last Skylanders console game released almost 8 years ago, and the last figure released almost 7 years ago. The community that's left has survived 8 years without any additional content. Yes, there's been mobile games and other projects within this time, but I'd say that has little impact on the community that appreciates the franchise today. Now, some enjoy one game over the other, but everyone has their favorite Skylanders installment and people are still enjoying its gameplay to this day. Fans are still collecting the figures today too. I mean, look at me, I still don't have everything. The second-hand market is still pretty active online and prices aren't plummeting due to lack of interest. Question is, would a new console game possibly impact this current community in the long run? Well, whether it's a remaster or a Sky 7, that announcement would definitely get people excited. The community would certainly feel lively for a moment, but that may only last based upon the quality and reception of this new game. If people hate it, a good number of those fans will leave and not look back. Additionally, 
whether or not a new game would implement Toys to Life, I'm willing to bet prices on the old figures will skyrocket online. All of the diehard fans that have been slowly building up their collection at a reasonable rate are going to have a much harder time picking up rarer pieces now that prices will be inflated, and that alone may do more damage to those collectors. If prices get too intense too quickly, they might feel unmotivated to collect anything further. It all comes down to this. Pleasing everyone is just simply not possible. There's many paths that could be explored for the future of the Skylanders franchise, but the majority of it is out of our hands. I'm doing my best to be realistic with this video as I refrain from sharing my own opinions of what I would like to see in the future. I wanted to provide you with the different perspectives that not everyone thinks about. So what would be the best course of action to take? The three examples I provided here really come down to risk versus reward. You have the release of a 7th Skylanders game that, if done right, can exponentially grow the community, but with that comes the risk of losing more of the fan base than what we started with. Then there's the remaster. Again, depending on how the game's handled, could open up the future for the franchise. And of course, there's the safe route. Sure, the lack of any new content could slowly decrease the community's enthusiasm as time goes on, but you don't risk the steep falloff that could permanently bury any future with this franchise. But I'm curious as to what you guys think. Do you agree with this risk and reward layout, or do you have your own different suggestions? Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Peace.